Hi, this is a reply to a game from scratch. So these are two visual language that are not very high level and that are very uh, useful and also generate a lot of uh, outputs from the communities. So this is uh, actually Snap. And if you go to the page of uh, the front page, you can see that there are a lot of application and there are games, there are uh, arts, there are even simple 3D stuff. And yeah, all of this is done through blocks. And that's because these blocks, they are very low level. And so they, they take the counterpoint. They don't say, yeah, let's hide stuff and make it very abstract, like run, uh, jump, and stuff like that. They say, yeah, OK, what we will give you is some sensors, and, but we will also give you the advanced uh, control stuff. and even uh, stuff like this, where you can pass a first order function. So you can create a function somewhere and then call it here and, and pass the function around if you want, which is pretty low level and very uh, difficult concept. So very few developers even know about that. Uh, so yeah, that's not something so high level. And then, uh, yeah, you, you have the if else, force, and yeah, it's very simple. I mean, yeah. And then you have the move and, and maybe some higher level function, but still you, you have basically something that is low level with a small library around it. Like what you're seeing there, it's just a library. And that would be the same with Godot. You would have the move function, the rotate function, uh, all the stuff. It's in a uh, uh, JavaScript. So it would appear also as blocks. And yeah, that would then be more high level or low level. It would be at the same level. And the fact that it uh, comes from JavaScript and then the, the language around it is a total uh, non-issue. And to show that, I will take Droplet. And so this is uh, actually like Snap, I would say. but. There, there is a difference. A snap is using a scheme-like uh, language, can the scene, and well, we can imagine that because that's the origin. And this one is using whatever language you want. And so there you see it says JavaScript. I will pick uh, CoffeeScript and click on toggle box. So now I have access to some blocks and it's like the blocks we saw and I can say, okay, I want to create a function and that function will uh, yeah, will output something, this, and then I will probably call it. So yeah, I'm just dr drag and dropping the stuff. And yeah, I can change the stuff in the blocks. Can we remove that? Yes, we can. And then, yeah, hello. And if I click toggle block, it takes the the code and then here I can change that. And I click on toggle block and you see that the blocks are there and I can still manipulate the, uh, the blocks. It's like uh, nothing did happen. Ah, yeah, so I'm, I'm trying something there, but yeah, that, that was the ghost block. So you see that, yeah, I can add a variable there, for example toggle block, I can take that line and make it uh, after console.log. So I'm between quotes moving the block and then I click toggle blocks and that's it, it moved within the blocks. So this language, this visual language is CoffeeScript. And I can say, yeah, okay, I will take JavaScript and then I will type uh, some JavaScript. So I can do that. And maybe call the original one. And then, uh, yeah, and then make my call like I did. Uh, and maybe do a for loop this time for, um, yeah, uh, let. But you can do no. Let's call it uh, 
10 times. So I have my loop and uh, I do the call. Voila. And I will click toggle block and we wait a bit and yeah, and it doesn't work for that one. Why, why is that? Let's know this one maybe. Ah yeah, okay. So it, it can't pass some JavaScript because I did put the new stuff. But if you remove the let up, it can translate back to some visual form. So yeah, and this is JavaScript shown as blocks and it's more accessible than JavaScript itself because now you have your for loop so you can go there and you have your for loop you can drag and drop here and yeah then you have your variable equal and it's already there for you to complete it's the same with if and else you can take this one up drag and drop and you can continue like that and you can imagine that if we were in Godot, that would be simply uh, the like I showed in the beginning, the coffee script version. Ah, it's funny that it did save the previous work. That would be this, exactly this, because it's indentation based, like uh, JDScript. And yeah, you still have your blocks and you could create vectors, you could uh, call any methods and have the same level of abstraction than Godot, but with the usability of blocks. Yeah, so yeah, I don't see the remark that uh, yeah they did that wrong and it wasn't abstract enough because it was based on uh, allez, on uh, JavaScript and then they did the language after because this is the case. The language is there and then the blocks comes after. And it works very well. I mean, it does what we want. It's very visual. You can see the nesting, and yeah, it doesn't. It's not much different than this one, which runs on a Lisp like VM. And yeah, it's, it's, except that there you don't access the code, and here you do. So yeah, that's something I don't understand. It was just few seconds, but this remark wasn't uh, fair. Because I think that it, yeah, I didn't know about that. And yeah, so it thought, yeah, okay, they, they have to redo everything, or I don't know, or yeah, it's not high level enough, but it doesn't need to. So yeah, it's just another way to input your code. So, and also in Godot, you can create your own uh, language. So, what I did in a game that uh, I call the Wilderness is that I use nodes and then you put nodes into your puzzles and thus those nodes contain the rules and you can combine the rules for your puzzle. And that way you don't have to know about Godot. You just have to know, okay, I draw the paths and then I put the constraint on the path and that's it, that's the puzzle. And also when you export properties, you can say, yeah, when the puzzle is solved, then call this method in, in the node and then you can pick a method that is already there like like uh, open for a door or something like that so even if you don't script if the programmer has put a door that can be opened and closed and then you can select it's going to the id and connect the event that is puzzle finished to open door and then it will open the door and it will be 100 percent visual so yeah, that's uh, that's the thing. That's the thing. So yeah, I don't think that the flow stuff is uh, that, that uh, useful. And it was also kind of like blueprints because you had the white stuff where you can follow the code and the, the stream of the code or the sequence. So it was one to one with that. And I think it was inspir inspired by that. So yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's just weird. So I wanted to show that and see now that you are not correct on that one. You can effectively start from the language and even go further than that. Have the language to be your uh, data storage, the, the format for your data storage. Because now there, these blocks are not stored as blocks. They are stored 
a, a source code and this source code I can do whatever I want with it and go back to block from the new source code so I can in one click use one way or another which is vastly superior to something like blueprint so yeah and it's very convenient but then it's not a graph that's uh, that's true it's not a graph so yeah that's something to yeah to note <laughs>